Hey, orange one here. So, uh, this is kind of weird for me because I actually recorded this episode without doing commentary, then recorded the next episode later the next day doing commentary, and then, like, two days later, I'm now doing commentary for this. So I'm all kind of like, wait, what was going on? I've actually forgotten a little bit about what happened, so I'm interested to see um, what we did. But from what I remember, we mostly just, like, crushed the Vlandian lords as the Northern Empire. So if you want to see that, that's basically what's going to happen. Um, I think, yeah, like, for example here, I've got, like, a couple people that are chasing me that can't take me, but if that other army right there gets to them, they totally could get me. So I think, yeah, I was... Oh, <laughs> you can hear me typing there. Oh, I actually had the... It looks like I had the mic on. Hmm. I usually might mute the mic when I do these. Well, it'll be interesting to see if I say anything. Hmm. Or do anything. <laughs> yeah, so I think... Oh, yeah, this guy, he... Yeah, couldn't get him to join, but we definitely have a number advantage here. It's not a huge number advantage, but it's enough where we should be able to crush them pretty well and then deal with this army of 143. You know, I think what I was thinking here was, um, like, the army that we currently have isn't really our full strength of our army. Follow me! Um... Because there was, like, other people in the Northern Empire. I think mercenaries that joined the Northern Empire because they bounced around between the factions. And I think, I don't know, but I think that we've been paying, like, taxes or something to the Northern Empire Move! because the king's been Infantry! recruiting a lot of mercenaries recently. Move! Oh, you know what I did? Oh, I remember this. I was a lot more strategic in these battles. Forward! I was actually commanding Move troops. Back! Right. Infantry! And the bowmen, yeah. Where did I end up putting them? I think I put them on the top of the hill. I'm not sure. So actually, if you look there, if you hold down Alt, you can actually click on a point and then tell people to go to that point using the mouse like that. I mean, it usually is in the center of your uh, screen, you know, but you can also do it that way. Just something kind of interesting to note. Yeah, so look at these archers. They're way high up. So if you look, look up at the top, we're getting a lot of archer kills. Like, yeah, Fian got a couple kills. There's, like, Imperial Palatines. Yeah, dude, all those archers are just, like, destroying their infantry right now. Everyone halt! Everyone halt. I don't know why I said that. Um, and, yeah, I think I was just like, wait, ah! How do I, I get them to do what I want? I think I was... Sergeants yeah, I was trying to get the sergeants to just kind of take charge for a second. And so, yeah, the sergeants tell them to do... Basically, the best possible thing, which is basically just charge in there, it looks like. Um, and yeah, there's a lot of people dying on both sides, but it's mostly them. So you can see our strategy of holding that hill works pretty well. There was a lot of archers there, though. A whole lot of archers on that hill there. And I told my archers to come back up here. And... Um, I think I told everyone to go forward. Yeah. At this point, I was like, okay, we got them routed. Just get the archers. Because they do a weird thing, like with some of the units where, like, the captains, they don't charge archers that they can clearly take, and then the archers just end up just whittling them down. It's really annoying. But as you can see here, we got, we got a pretty good uh, route going. Right? I mean, look at that. That's, like, at least 50 people routed oh my god like the, the one hit kill oh man so you know what's nice about doing the commentary after the fact is that i can actually free up my brain to actually think about things to talk about you know isn't that like it's kind of nice but yeah it's just kind of crazy i've been um thinking a lot about how like i need to be more appreciative of the things i have in life you know and like i don't know I like doing these recordings, but I also like doing some other things. So I don't know. I, I think I've been uploading a little bit too much. So I, I'm sorry that I've been uploading a little bit less, but it's kind of got to go that way with the Banner Lord series. Like, it's it's a really fun game. Don't get me wrong. But I've there's other things there I've been enjoying. Um, I've been doing a lot of, like, 
cook in the last few days, which I've been liking. But I've also been playing, uh, you know, Halo. Have you guys ever played the first Halo? I've been playing that a lot. Like I like the uh, Master Chief Collector's Edition, and um, been playing a lot with one of my friends, one of my neighborhood friends. Um, and that's been really fun. Just kind of just playing a game, not being recording, just like to like for nostalgia. And it's it's a really good game too, as well. Like the first Halo, it's just a really fun game. It's just weird how the nostalgia like that works with some things like that, where it's like it inherently isn't that good. And like you can kind of look back at it and be like, yeah, like that was cool then, but I don't know if I would do that now. But then other things are like, no, I'd still do that. Like Halo, I'd still play that. <laughs> and then there's other things where I'd like in the right circumstances I would play that. Like I played. Like, normally I would never play Pac-Man, you know? But I was at this one um, social event with other teachers once, and they went to a game bar. Have you ever been to one of those? Where, like, the people are just, like, drinking and playing uh, games? Like, all kinds of arcade games? Or, like, there's also, like, the board game bars as well, which they also went to. Um, which is like it's so funny. It's like how how do teachers party? Oh, they go to board game and arcade bars. That, okay, <laughs> weird. <laughs> um, but anyway, it's just it was really fun. But it was like okay in that circumstance, I would play like Pac-Man or some weird arcade Simpsons game, which apparently is a an a like uh, this pillar of American arcade culture. Apparently, it was a very difficult game, and yeah. There's just all kinds of stuff that they have in these things, which is kind of cool because it's like almost like a museum, you know? But at the same time, I always feel like they're just like scamming you. Like, that's like an inherent part of like an arcade is that it's like just super scam. Like, it, they're just making you pay by the minute for something and so if you spend a lot of time there, oh man, you spend so much money. It's crazy. Um, or that is the case in some places. I like the places that are not like that. They're structured a little bit differently. That's more my my type of place that I like to go to. There was there was a place like that at uh, one of the places I used to live in the downtown, where like they had all the consoles that you could play, and then you just have to order like some drink or some food, and as long as you had drinks and food, you could stay, and you didn't have to play for the games or pay for the games. You could just um, play whatever they had, if it was available. You know, within reason, you know. I, it, it was a pretty cool setup. I liked that. And they had like, oh man, they had like Super Smash Brothers. Which is such a good game. I love that game so much. I don't know which game I love more, Halo or Super Smash Brothers. I like them for different reasons, you know. But it's... It's like interesting going back and now playing those games because like I remember looking back at like old people doing that when I was a kid and being like, you're crazy. <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> play the new stuff. But now that uh, I uh, look back and I'm like, no, I want to play those old games. I want to spend some time, you know, going back uh, through um, like the Pillar of Autumn and uh, storming that Covenant ship in... Uh, is it Truth or Reconciliation? Is that the name of that mission? I think it is. Oh man, it was it was really fun. Move, archers! Move! And of course we were playing Look on Legendary, because you have to, soldiers! right? On my flank, infantry! After me! I don't know who's charging. Oh yeah, it was, oh I remember this. The five guys that we were trying to save just charged in. And I was like, oh man, okay, we gotta save them. Let's charge in with them, right? Take over command! And then I told them to maybe like do their own thing so that if I get killed, I don't they don't just all die, you know? And then I think uh yeah, I was like, never mind. Follow me, everyone. I I thought was following me, but it was just the cavalry. Yeah, and I think I realized at this point they're holding their ground. Which is probably a good thing, because, yeah, those now two remaining troops are not worth us sacrificing our own men for, <laughs> you know. We'll save the Lord. He'll get knocked out. We'll save him. 
Oh, by the way, I saw something on Reddit about uh, Dirt Heart getting killed, like falling in battle. I didn't know that that was a thing. Can they actually get killed in battle? Is can because like I haven't seen anything like that happen in game. But I don't know if you get a message or anything. To be honest, I don't know how it works. I'm really curious actually about it, about those mechanisms behind that. Because if you can like kill them in battle, man, that would really change the whole dynamic of the game. Yeah, I think that the enemy was holding their ground, so I decided to kind of slowly advance. So I was trying to be a little bit more tactical here because um, if you look at their numbers, to our numbers, they could inflict heavy casualties. It's totally possible. So we just need to be a little bit careful. And so I was just trying to figure out, okay, what distance do people start shooting at? I don't know what the distance is, but it sounds like... Yeah, so I'm hearing some things getting shot there. Someone shot a banner knight or something. Which it looks like is 187-ish away? Okay. And there's some arrows on the ground right by our guy's feet right there. So they're shooting at us, actually. Which is interesting. I'm not seeing my people shooting right now, you know? And so, yeah, I think that I ran to this little outcropping here to get a better view of them. Do a little scouting. And then maybe get the army up with them. After me! I mean, it's like, you know, like for uh, a while there, I actually played Warband on and off. Um, for nostalgia as well. I just had it on my old laptop. And so I, I think I played Warband like a year ago. Um, and then like a, maybe half a year ago on the channel. But like I, I got into it for a while like a year ago and like maybe like four or so years ago as well. And like I played like the Breton Walda mod. If you guys ever played that, it's like what inspired the Viking Conquest mod. I didn't pay the money for the Viking Conquest, and now I kind of regret that, because it is a really good mod. Oh yeah. They're kind of facing a weird direction if you if you look here. Like, our guys aren't really facing them, so I was trying to change their facing direction. Yeah, there we go. And then infantry, same thing. Turn to the enemy, yep. So if you're trying to rotate your army, that's how you do it. You know, there is something about to say about the imperial color scheme with the purple. I do like that, the royal purple. But like, the legionnaires, they didn't have purple, did they? That was only for like the top people in the army. Like the, weren't the, they mostly wearing red? And like uh, like bronze, so it was like you know that shiny metallic. Um, but I thought it was like mostly like white linens and red. I don't know, but that's what comes to mind when I think of like that time period and that style, you know. And then here I was honestly just trying to see what was going on, just trying to get a, a bearing, maybe get some kills. And there's some people fleeing that we can kill, but that is that really shouldn't be who I'm focusing on. But I think the battle's pretty much over at this point. And then I'm not sure who's who, like who's on what team. I'm pretty sure he's the enemy, but I wasn't 100% sure. Yeah, so he's red. So he's not the purple Imperials fighting for the Senate. Not really. And it's so sweet when you get that arrow against the, another horseman, like, they're charging at you and you charge at them. Oh look, there's this weird floating thing above them. I remember this. There's like a weird graph graphical glitch. Do you see that, like, floating bow thing that was, like, over him? It's very, very light. It was kind of hard to see there. I don't know what was going on there. It's definitely better than the Mr. Fluffy's bug, where, uh, like, was it, um, I think it's the... Batanian King and like one of my companions look like fuzzball models. Like they're they're like everything was just all 
puffed out and like sharp at the same time. Super weird. I can't remember what episode that was from. Someone might remember. If you if you do, if you put it in the comments. Thank you. <laughs> I was gonna say you get something special, but I was like, I don't know what I would give you. <laughs> Maybe I would name one of uh Rodan's children after you. His like twenty-fifth kid or something. It's yeah. It's so crazy how many kids the game has made. <laughs> and like well, I mean, it's been a fair amount of time, but still, it's pretty insane. I'm sure they get that all balanced out. It'll be like Crusader Kings. Crusader Kings does a pretty good job of modeling that and kind of limiting you. But that's like a later scale, right? For now, they just want like the fighting to look good and feel good. And it, it does. It's, you know, some of the underlying mechanics which are a little bit wonky, but that's what makes the game Bannerlord, right? Like all this trading and uh, like we were talking about a while ago with like the the weapons if you like sell those to places you might get better troops and stuff or there might be more looters in certain areas if you raid more and that, that deep simulation man is oh, that's what I, I'm playing this game for is like the story through the deep simulation and man if I can pull off the um, taking a castle with the northern empire and then claiming it for myself and taking the castle myself, man. <laughs> it's gonna be awesome. Yeah, I don't know how I'm gonna do it, but I'm gonna have to basically like fight the Northern Empire and like beat back their lords and the Vlandian lords and then take the castle mostly by myself. So I'm gonna need to inflate myself to the 170 and then siege down the castle. I mean, to be honest, I don't think the um, the Northern Empire really has the armies to stop me right now, but they might. I mean, what I would really want to do is lead the enemy or my my guys, lords, into enemy territory and then run back or something. I don't know, but yeah. We'll, we're going to try and get people to leave the Vlandians, because right now a weaker Vlandia is is good for us. I think a weaker Vlandia and right now a little bit of a stronger Northern Empire, but not too strong, would really, really make it easy for me to take a castle that one of them takes from the others. Or, I mean, I don't really want... Because the Asari, once they go to war against them, I don't want to go to war against the Asari, but maybe I could look at the Vlandians and see if they take anything back from the Asari. And then um, just rush in as best I can to take that for myself. I don't know. We'll see. I just need a castle. I heard that there's a, something about a sandbox Move. kingdom thing in the beta so if that gets put out into the the main game if that's stable then uh we'll be able to get our own kingdom so i might pause on playing the battle lord until that gets sorted out so that i don't have to like hunt down that guy in marina because that uh I, that seems so unnecessary like you have to get your fief and have all that stuff and then go find this guy and not have that fief get taken no i want to be able to found my kingdom from my little random castle in the landing countryside right I mean, that's what this game's all about. I mean, really, this game's all about trading uh, butter, and we all know Soldiers, that, right? Move! That's the true meaning of Christmas. I mean, Bannerlord. Infantry! <laughs> yeah, I like I like Locked playing up! this game a little bit more strat strategically. I've heard there's a really good mod that turns this basically into like a total war conversion, where you can um, have like a more uh, skybox view of all of your units and command them to specific points. And <clears throat> excuse me, I'd be really interested to play more of that because I love me some um, total war. I haven't played any of the newer ones. I was always about Rome. Rome Total War. That was that was the Total War in my mind. 
Though I think the original Total War wasn't that like the Shogun. I didn't play it. That was before my time. For me, the original that I played was uh, Rome Total War, which was amazing. Such a cool strategy game. Oh no, what's going on? Oh, no. Something Whoa. weird's happening. I don't know. Forward. Like with my mouse or something. But it's on the screen that you're not going to be seeing. Because you guys are going to watch my uh, already pre-recorded um, screen of the actual game footage. I'm having a hard time speaking right now. <laughs> so here, yeah, what I was thinking was just go for the high ground, because if you've ever played any of these, these strategy games, if you're in the open field, you want the high ground. It's pretty much like what wins battles, is get the hill, hold it, and shoot down from there, if you can. If you can't, wait up there and pull them towards you. We got archers, hide on the other side of the hill. It's like, you know... It's not that hard. But it can also be a, a lot more complicated than just that, you know? Especially if you get, like, flanked or you've like, flanking maneuvers, but you can't really do that with how Bannerlord's set up. It's not really um, intended for that level of complexity of, like, being able to flank as an individual. <laughs> but you can do that in, like, uh, Captain Mode, and, man... I need, I need to go back and play more Captain Mode. I like that a lot. That was super fun to play that with my brother. I should do that. I should hit him up and see if he wants to do that. Yeah, it's... It's tough when you're, you've got this kind of situation where it's like... You definitely have the advantage. We don't want to charge too fast, you know? Because, like, look, we're getting them with our archers, so it's like, Whoa! do I want to get closer, or do I just kind of want my archers to just keep on, pit, like, Whoa! nailing them? But it looks like they're coming towards me. So I think I was telling my infantry, hey, Everyone, wait on top of this ridge. Your and then, yeah, just sergeants, because things are about to go down. And, yes, things are going down. If you look at that, that screen, uh death count or whatever. Oh man, oh, a good thing I missed him, he's one of mine. You're not one of mine. These archers right here, they've probably killed a ton of my guys already, the archers. They always tend to get like high kills, that's what I've found in my experiences. The AI does not counter the archers very well, and so they just end up just tagging a ton of guys. They're just standing there. Can it work in your favor or not? Like, either way. Kind of depends on which units are on whose side, right? But I'm pretty happy with that. That went pretty well. I mean, we only got, like, an injury, maybe, like, a fifth of our army, or, like... Yeah, like a sixth or a fifth or something of our army got taken out there. Yeah, it's hard because we have all the same unit system, and the only thing that really differentiates them is the colors of their shields and their clothing, but it's not always consistent with their clothing. But it just looks better, so I don't mind it too much. The occasional friendly fire. Eh. Which is also something that I find that I, I tend to not try and do friendly fire on the computers, like units that serve me for some reason. Like, you're one of mine. I would not dare shoot you. But when it's like my friends and we're just like playing games, man. That is not the case. We definitely would shoot each other plenty. So many people to upgrade, right? And we gotta get rid of some people, unfortunately. Man, these are all tier three. Stuff when the the game does that to you when you get such a good situation, it's like, man, come on.
That's pretty good. Another level. I like that. Kind of hard, like weird because we got two points there for leveling up our one-handed. So I think there was something where they like updated the one-handed stats or something like that. And um, I think the perks got affected by that and where they're at. And so you have to select them again. You know. Sorry, just I'll be right back. I'm gonna keep the video running because I don't want to mess up the syncing. But I'll be right back myself. Much better. <clears throat> I've just like had like a little bit of a scratchy throat and like I've just been like suffering for like the last like 10-15 minutes. I don't know if you could notice. And there's like some water across the room. I've just been like looking at him like, do I want to go over there? Is it worth it? <laughs> I don't know. I'll just suffer through it. It was it was too much. You gotta take care of yourself, right? Oh man, so crazy news, you know, I <laughs> gotta be moving again. <laughs> yeah. It'll be good though. I'm excited. Why am I selling all my food? Am I do I realize what I'm doing there? I think I was trying to buy food and I just sold all of our food. Yeah, I think that I just did the wrong thing. Or maybe it was a beneficial price. I don't know. No, I'm pretty sure I just totally messed that up. <laughs> Whoops. I made some money, right? That would explain why my uh, party has been slaughtering animals. Because, like... I have been getting messages recently about slaughtering animals. I think that's what's going on there. Like, I think the last episode, it was like constantly popping up. Yeah, I think I was trying to get food because I was going to maybe try and siege down Rezos, which is a good idea that I didn't do that because, yeah, they've got a mega stack right there. And not a mega stack, but that's a big stack. Like, that could that could hold its own against, um, not the whole Asari nation, but against, like, a good chunk of those, sorry, people. Look at that track. My character, he, he's not very good at tracking, but even he can see when a thousand six hundred people have passed through an area. You know, that must actually be, must have been pretty crazy to have seen that. I mean, they've depicted that in, like, the Witcher series pretty well. Like, depicting, like, war zones and, like, just like all the torn up mud and like burnt uh, like trees and everything and burnt houses and everything and just like fields of like rotting like dead people <laughs> it's like oh god you know Take over, they don't really do that so much in the band lord a little bit more of a cleaned up version of it like you know i love band lord but like it definitely i it, it is very brutal in its own right, and it does a lot of things, but it definitely pulls some punches in that regard, you know, compared to some other games. Like, oh, I think I just, yeah, my, my headphones, do they need charging? I think my headphones might need charging, I just lost the audio there. Oh, look at that dude, he's, he's working out in the field. I remember that, he was like chopping out there with like some onions I think those look like they're supposed to be onions it's a pretty nice garden you should start a blog huh <laughs> the Calradian farmer blog <laughs> I'd watch that <laughs> oh man I just got an idea for a YouTube video <laughs> oh that would be so bad it'd be so painful I don't know if I could do it I don't know if I've got the courage or the strength. <laughs> um, yeah, so I think what I was thinking here was that big ol' army 
not going to be fun to deal with. Yeah, I was slaughtering animals here, and I was very confused as to why. Because I thought I just bought a ton of stuff. Oh, look, the Sari have declared war on Vlandia. Yeah, so this is where, basically, I decide that we need to push it. Because I was thinking of maybe taking it easy, because we're kind of low on units ourselves. And our companions are, too. And, you know, it's like, well... Do I want to fight the Vlandians now, or do I want the, um, the Asari to crush them out a few times, or like, how do I want this to work? And then I saw, oh, there's a stack of 700 there. Great. Just splendid, right? I mean, we could probably take them, and I think that's even our ally right there, so maybe I should have, but that's a, that's a big army. And I don't think we have the numbers to take them. So, you know, I was like, okay, well, I'll just go back up here. But as you would, I were probably thinking, what about, what about them? So, yeah. What do you do? What do you do in this situation? Well, you hope that you're fast enough and you ditch the lords if they're slow. Hmm. <laughs> You know, it's like the shooting your friend in the leg so the bear doesn't eat you, <laughs> right? <laughs> and you can't judge someone in that situation, right? You gotta do what you gotta do. And I think, yeah, I was just um, recording a ton of stuff. Or because I was recording this, I wasn't sure because I was doing it with no commentary if I was just gonna like edit some of it down so I ended up not editing it down because I thought it was pretty action-packed and then but um yeah I was doing those saves just to like be able to refer to certain points if I needed to but then guess what happened this army starts to splinter Joran's army and you know I was thinking of you know collecting more troops but We've got a pretty good amount of troops, and we could weaken the Northern Empire as well as the, uh, the Vlandians by having them fight each other, right? So we got all these mercenaries. And use those mercenaries to fight these guys. Hopefully the mercenaries I can convince to join me, because um, they'll be all in the same area. And then if I can give one of the mercenaries um, a thief, I myself don't need thieves. I've got tons of income. Um, from our, our like stores in the Asari land. So like it's like, well, as long as we don't go to war with the Asari myself, I'm gonna be fine, you know? So yeah. We'll just go to war with whoever's fighting against the Asari. Or maybe um Yeah. And see if we can get some land that way. But we are gonna have to start fighting against the Asari pretty soon. Like honestly. Like, we might want to eat up the smaller ones as much as we can and then go after the Asari, but, like, it might be best of us to just, like, raid the Asari land and just raid, raid, raid as much as possible and just make the uh, notables just give you troops wherever they're um, not so predisposed to do so, you know? I might just, like, do, like, a grassroots uh, uprising in the Asari Kingdom land. That would be super fun. This this guy right here, he seems to be all by himself. Yes, he is trying to raid this village. There's a couple hundred people in the hills around, but they're not with him. So, uh, you know, divide and conquer. It's the, you know, united we stand thing, right? You guys are divided. I mean, there's like nearly 300 of them, I think, right here. So I think they they definitely don't feel very divided. Raiding a village, you know, there's just like some farmers. And you've seen me raid villages. A, a stack of 300 can take out any village's militia like super easy. The militias maybe have 100 people. I think. I've not seen... Have I seen more than 100? I think I might have seen more than 100, but it's pretty rare. 
I think that the lords actually have to like invest in it. And then no, that's a shame. And then oh yeah, there's a ton of horses here. A ton of them wearing red. Yeah, I think that. Oh come on! Such a missed opportunity. Yeah, there's a ton of horsemen out here right now, but I think we have a huge number advantage. So, yeah. Oh, they are, they did arch me there. Got some archers. Oh, I remember this. They were being idiots. I remember this. They were just like hiding in these rocks. And it's like, dude, don't stop hiding in the rocks. Get out of the rocks and shoot these guys, please. Look at them. They're all right there. Right? I and mean, look at that. It's like the perfect opportunity to just like blast them. Footman! And the footman. Follow me! Yeah, the footman I had come over here. I do remember that kind of. So when the enemy does get pulled to the archers. Oh man, the archers are doing pretty good now. But they are also getting hit by the enemy archers. But our infantry, I think we tried to flank with. Yeah, we tried to get a good approach on them with our infantry. But then, yeah, we started just getting tagged by like archers and they're throwing weapons and... That was not good. As you can see at this point, we've inflicted a little bit more casualties than have, have been inflicted on us. And then everyone I think I just tell to get in there. Right? Sergeants, in charge. Sergeants, yeah, can take over. Infantry's holding high ground. And, oh yeah, I remember this now. This is pretty crazy. We just got tons of archers all around us. And we've got, like, a uh, melee going on right here. Yeah, it's just craziness. <laughs> Get behind the line. <laughs> Basically. I'm just gonna hide down here and hope that we, we are okay. I can't remember. Did I make it out of this or not? Without falling. Well, in either case, what I do remember is that we were really badly hurt. Yeah, because we weren't able to do like some fight that was like soon after this or something. I vaguely remember that. Well, that was good though. I was pretty happy with the results there. Let me know if you guys would like to see some of the Halo. If you guys would like me see, to see me playing that. I don't know if I'm going to do it on camera. It's definitely going to enjoy it off camera. <laughs> yeah, I don't know if we've been blessed. We're, we're kind of like landless. <laughs> like these vagabonds just running around like Vlandian countryside being like, we're Imperials. <laughs> And there goes the last one. Cool. You gotta make him count, right? Oh, it counts as an Asari victory because we were helping out the Asari village? Well, I don't know how I feel about that. <laughs> I think, you know, what's gonna really help with our kingdom growing is the charming and convincing people to join the kingdom and just bribing them. And if we can get their troops to join, if I can just like use my two million to just get like a couple very powerful lords to join me. I think we'll be doing just dandy, you know? In any case, it looks like we're pretty much getting to the end here in the last 20 seconds. So uh, yeah, uh, it's been a pleasure. Thank you for joining me. And um, I'll see you around. Uh, things are, the next episode is pretty exciting. You'll enjoy it. I don't know about the next one. We'll see about when we, I get to it.